Is 703, we're going to call the Board of Selectmen to meet, meeting to order. The agenda has been put out on the web, and uh, we need to follow the agenda tonight. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm, I'd like to first start off with a, uh, Bob, if you could help me out here. Yeah, well, you know, if we could give a moment of silence for one of our Dunbar residents that was killed on a construction site. He's a neighbor, or friends to people, and I think sometimes uh, we don't realize it, but people in town that pass away this way or by an accident, it doesn't uh, hurt for the selectmen to address it. So I'd ask if we could stand and give him a few moments of time. Did you, want to say the, did you want to say the person's name? Well, the problem is I think they're still trying to reach a couple of people, so oh, they actually okay. well, haven't it's, it's, released it. It is on the... the I know it, okay. and they haven't released it. Okay, it. yep. So, no, I'm just... I'm trying to be video. discreet so that, you know... I'm, okay, let's uh, start off with a little business. I think we have some minutes. The first set is um, the regular meeting minutes of June 29th. I've read the uh, meeting minutes for June 29th, and I make a motion that we accept the meeting minutes for June 29th as written. I'll second that. Any discussion on that? Hearing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Two signals. Bobby, so he's assigned that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, next set of minutes we have <coughs> is from the non public session of June 29th. Do I have a motion from anyone? I've read those meeting minutes and I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, non public on uh, meeting minutes from June 29th. 2017. As I recall, they were also uh, to be sealed, and we those voted on the last meeting. That's correct. I'll any, make it part of my motion that we seal them. Okay. Do I have a second? No second. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? The only only thing is uh, part of that I think didn't need to go through that certain level, and uh, you know, so I said that it needed to be sealed. Correct, you know, uh, but uh, only because you have conflicting records out there, okay? I guess I'll use that terminology, but I, I can, I'll second the motion to get beyond this one, but I think, uh, I think uh, have, we'd have to question some of that a little further, you know, when we're doing that. Here no for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have one more set of special minute meeting minutes. We had a meeting July 10th of this year. Uh, July 10th, we had a special meeting because we had a um, we had a time crunch in order to uh, 
approve the, the uh, right after, right? Mm -hmm. approve a submission of an application for uh, a police grant for consideration of an additional police officer. And basically, it was a uh, meeting where the selectmen approved just the submission of an application so we can compete for a, a grant and uh, we can obtain some money if we decide to go down that road. And uh, the decision will be made by um, the legislative body, the voters, in March. But at least it gives us the opportunity. The selectmen voted to approve, go seek out the application through police chief. But, uh, okay, I do have a motion for that special meeting to approve the minutes. Well, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay. And any further discussion on that? Other than the fact that it's just applying for a grant, right? That uh, you know you may still see someone come forward yep. for a for a new position, but with a grant, probably make it more acceptable to some or whatever. But uh, what we decided is we're just taking a position on a grant. Well, it gives us more options for the townspeople Correct. if they decide to work on that position. And it's not something that we're binding to. Any further discussion? Nope. Okay, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Of this one here? Yeah, of all of them? Yeah. Okay. No, I got this one. Okay. It's the other, the other one's in. The, 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 it's, it's, on on your, it's on your agenda? Is it on, uh, uh, is it on the, t the time isn't there. That's why I want to see them. I just need the actual time besides the date. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I just sealed it, so I don't know what oh. that time is. But it should be in the, in the, um, oh. in the body of the uh, That's right. minutes. Okay. Yeah, the body of the minutes. Yeah, yes. you're right. Um, and that date was um, uh, June, July, June 29th. June 29th. Okay. Came out of non public at 9 15. A motion to seal. Oh, that's that one. Okay. And, and then was... adjourn the meeting at 9 17. Okay, 9 15. What was the other one? The time? 9 17. Nine. Oh, no, I mean the other, other meeting minutes, the regular meeting minutes from June. Uh, 29th. When did 20, they start? Oh. You when, when they started? No, oh, yeah, June 29th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The regular meeting started. So at, at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. It was okay. Thank you. Seven o one. Twenty three minutes. Seven o one. Okay. Okay. I'd like to open up the meeting to at uh, this point uh, any public comment we may have. Okay. Don. No. No. Here, no public comment. We're going to go right down the agenda then. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, um, we discussed the last time the, uh, the quotes for the painting quotes at the last meeting, and um, we had an opportunity to reach out to all the people who submitted, and we asked them to resubmit quotes with some guidance from um, the board. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave, uh, just Bob, Dave uh, had a chance meeting with me, so he uh, contributed to the call for follow-up. It was great. Thank you, Dave. Oh, that was very good. And uh, I have a little sheet here now of the three uh, uh, contenders. Um, two of them returned um, quotes, and the third one did not. And they, I think they, were, they did not provide an updated bid. And what I did is just uh, I took a summary. You have a, in your packet, you have a copy of the new bids, and you also have a, um, uh, like a, a summary. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, the things we were concerned about is we want to make sure we, uh, things like uh, Method of application, surface preparation, the type of um, primer, warranty, and any other thing that uh, was of interest that we discussed. And so you have all three quotes here. Now, what we have here tonight, we have, uh, just to let you know, um, two of the people who provided updated quotes, uh, they were given invitations to arrive here. Uh, I have uh, Don Tuttle from Tuttle Restorative Pain. Don, welcome. And we have uh, Brian from Reliable Coatings. Yes, sir. And uh, 
they're here if we have questions with them. Okay. Okay. And uh, and we might open up to they can comment on their quotes, but uh, essentially, uh, I didn't want to be the filter to filter what they said on the quote. So if we, as you take a summary, summary look up the quote. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any direct questions, we have subject matter experts here without the non-painter filter. <laughs> Don, I read one thing on yours and I didn't uh, get a chance today to go outside. There was some red detailing on this accents in the building here. Were they on the entryways as we come in here? He was going to offer red detailing. Oh. And what areas would those be in, Don? Let me just say, Brian, you know, he's, he's very good. Um, he's, so you're not going to go wrong, I think, with either one of us. Uh, he's established. He does great work. And uh, so I just want to give him credit because he's very good. Um, I had a chance to um, access a interior exterior decorator with many of the houses we've done where there were issues with colors and that type of thing. And she would basically work with the homeowner in terms of that. And obviously I don't have any much expertise in that area, but I spent quite a bit of time with her and she would look at a place and she would look at it in terms of the landscape, the highlights of the building, um, how, how colors are going to flow and so forth. And basically her approach was um, a low profile, uh, very um, unobtrusive, uh, not get carried away, just little small details. Um, the thing I would suggest, and I don't know whether Brian's on the same page, he may be, uh, and it's not, a minor, it's not a major thing, but look at the building, obviously it's all white, mm -hmm. and you don't want to go all these different colors and, and basically look like, like it's a checkerboard square. But one of the big highlights that I see are the two chimneys, and you got the two doors that are red, and I think that if you did a really subtle, and I mean really subtle, um, accent in terms of where the sign is, where the dental work is, and maybe uh, beside the doors where there's some paneling, where you just do a very, very little bit of that so that it doesn't jump out, but it kind of flows from the chimney to the doors to the entranceway, but you look at the whole building and everything flows and it's not uh, overdone, it's just a very, very subtle uh, thing to do that to me would uh, enhance the building, especially the entranceway, and definitely not get carried away with it. Um, so I, a little bit of that goes a long ways, mm -hmm. but we've tried to do that in a lot of jobs. We try to look at highlights in terms of roofs, landscaping, chimneys, walkways, and that kind of thing. So they would definitely create a flow with that, but again, very, 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 very low key as far as uh, doing that and just small little touch. Okay. Would you look look at it all as almost like pinstriping? Um, yeah, and I think added to that is that it creates a flow, so that when you have a building and let's say the chimneys are really a highlight, and you've got a red door, sometimes you have brick walkways going to the door, so everything kind of flows. So yeah, it would be like a pinstriping on a car, where it would be very very subtle, uh, but it would just add a little bit to it. Like for example, out front where you have the that uh, vent area, whatever, in the top. Just a little bit of that, which would just kind of pick it up a little bit. Okay. Doesn't add to the cost of it. Uh, there are two numbers there. He's a cap price, and then he has a low estimate. And the thing is, that will be I think so. Let me just do the math sure. real quickly. And yeah, I was explaining to him what this was. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you have any questions on any of these? Not really. Okay.
So that's the total that comes up that I see here. Right. And then he's got a calf, and then a will Just give it a few minutes. I was looking at it all afternoon, so I have it all here. <laughs> thing is, uh, um, I want to say thank you to both of you for coming in. And the thing is, um, I want I would say stay tuned. If, if one of you guys get the contract and you're happy with it, that's great. Uh, one, it's going to be one winner, one loser. But I'll be honest with you, we have just started the big. We have two other buildings similar size of this building that need painting. And we also have the great monster out there. The great white monster is going to require, it's going to have to be put out the formal bid. And so and that's going to probably happen next year because we're going to have to appropriately budget for that. So don't feel like if you don't get it today, don't, you're not out of running because we have other buildings in town and uh, we're going to have to appropriately budget for them. Sure. And so I would say stay tuned and keep applying. Awesome. Okay. I don't want to disenfranchise anybody. All right. <laughs> This has been a learning process for me uh, about paint, primers, surface prep. I realized uh, both of you gentlemen came up with that, explained to me that it's not the painting that's important. It's right. all about the surface prep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I, like Mike said, I was, at, I was at those phone calls, conversations. So I asked a lot of questions of your companies, I think, and through your wife or whatnot. So she answered, I think, most everything we had. Um, maybe explain your, you have a one-year warranty, it looks like. Me, oh, yeah. no, you have a two year. No, this is a Brian. This is from Reliable. Not reliable, reliable. Yes, so it is one year warranty. <clears throat> yes, we typically do a one year warranty on. So when we do an oil primer, uh, you know, it, it has less of uh, an expansion and contraction opposed to the uh, the primer that I had first uh, proposed. Um, it's, it's an elastomeric primer. Uh, so it's got more of a gear. Um, I do do a one-year warranty on you know on all labor, um, and of course the materials is always backed by whichever company is uh, is chosen to you know whichever we use. Um, you know if there and if there's any other issues with you know after a year you know we can always come out and take a look at it. It's not like we would say oh well, years up you know uh, yeah. uh, you know for either application either being oil. Uh, primer or the uh, the elastomeric primer, um, you know, uh, you, you definitely will get the life out of it. You you know, being as it's an old building, you may get a, a couple of what we call popping uh, of the old previous coatings. You know, having a few spots that you know you just can't you can't guarantee unless you're taking all of it off. Uh, so you know, you may have one or two spots you know, on a side. Just you know, you never can tell. So. But those are always easily remedied. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, any other questions? I'm going to just go ahead. This is the one that did not. Yeah. Okay. If there's no other questions, what I'd like to do is um, I'd, uh, make a decision later in the meeting today because I'd like to bounce this across, uh, across our revenues yeah. and uh, across what we have at okay. the expense yeah. fund. And we won't hold these gentlemen up, but we'll say a decision will be made this evening and the town administrator will be in contact with one one, one or two of you, both, both, both of you, both. give you courtesy both of you, sure. and uh, you can call up or down which way we, we, we decide. But we're gonna have to bounce it against what we have in, uh, we have available in funding, yeah, so we can go from there. Do you have anything last thing to say? Either I'll open up the floor, Don first. Go ahead. Brian, no, no, uh, Brian, uh, Brian go ahead. I don't, I just, you know, wanted to make sure everyone was kind of on the same page, that, you know, the, yep. anyone from the town or, or you select them that needed you know any other uh, any other information about our method well, of application? Or again, or thank you for receiving a phone call. It really helped uh, helped us understand it a little bit more and okay. explained it and, uh, and provided an updated bits. So kudos and and Don, anything for the group? Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, I'm sure Brian 
does things pretty much the way that, that I do them. And there may not be a huge difference between the two of us. All I can tell you is I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I probably made every mistake in the book you can make um, <laughs> without any doubt. Um, hopefully I've got it right at this point. Um, I guess the two things that, that I try to do um, is I do a lot of work myself, and I'm sure he's the same way, so that you don't have to go back over somebody's wor uh, work. And um, I'm OCD when it comes to getting things prepped right and going over it and that type of thing. Um, obviously, uh, the prep is the whole key to the whole thing. You can talk about pain and 78 all pain, but it's like a road that you don't reclaim and it's a bad road, it's gonna just keep going. Um, I use grinders. It's obviously, there's gonna be lead containment here as far as plastic and stakes and caution tape and HEPA vax and the whole thing. But, you know, I, we do a lot of grinding um, and, you know, what it does is it basically evens out things so that you don't have uh, highs and lows as far as that. And, I mean, that's probably 56% of the time is spent just doing that. And that's what I'm into and that's what I really get excited about is when it gets prepped in terms of, I can show you pictures of places where the old Lamy house down here, we stripped just about the whole thing, it's huge. Um, so, there's just a lot of obsession compulsion with, uh, with that. Um, and obviously, the second thing is that I want to get it the way that I want it, and so I'm going to fuss with it. I'm sure he's going to be the same way. All right. So whether it's going to be prep work or whatever, the paint thing is a variable. My choices here would be probably Sherman Williams Woodscapes. Uh, I use Clark Kensington uh, Primer Finish. That's uh, a top of the line Ace product. Oil Primer is the same thing. Uh, so basically, what I'm looking for, and I'm sure Brian is the same way. You're looking for ultimate appearance and longevity, and that's the key in terms of uh, using your money, planning it, using it wisely. As far as that. Um, I get a lot of my work out of scraping paints where it's three or four years out and we're in and we're just basically taking off a lot that's been put on. So I've got these huge port cable grinders that I use and I've been using them forever. And that may be what separates me, but in terms of the two of us, there probably isn't that much difference uh, in terms of application or anything else. So uh, I just try to get it right like he does um, and been doing it a long time. So. Um, well, I have to say you both, you both helped educate the celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of variables to painting, it's just, you know, people say, oh, I can paint, but there's so many different variables to prepping, application, the whole thing, and um, you basically get it so that um, it's going to be like your own house, so that at the end of the day or at the end of the job, I got it the way I wanted. Um, I'm going to do it the best way I can, just like with Brian. And, you know, are you satisfied with it or not? It's like basically the standard is going to be, am I satisfied with it? And if I'm not, it's going to be a way to just kind of keep playing with it. So, and I'm sure he's the same way. So, um, so whether we, I win or lose or whatever, it's like that's how I work. And uh, I can tell you how many hours looking at here and this and that. There are a lot of variables here with, for example, the club wing. One reason why there's a range here is because. You start collaborating, I'm sure Brian would say the same thing. Once you start going, uh, how far are you going to go with collaborating? Maybe you're cracking on the boards, you're doing this, you're doing that. So there's a lot of variables of that. How much grinding you're going to do, how the grinding is going to go as far as the ease of it. And you always do more than you figured on. So it's, it's all those things. And obviously, um, you, all of you people want the best bang for your buck in terms of longevity and appearance and the whole thing. So I think that's where we both are at. So, awesome. Again, thank you. Okay. But I'm not going to hold you guys up. If you want to leave, you are welcome to stay. But we're going to, we have to go through a lot of boring stuff still. <laughs> <laughs> All the fun stuff is over. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But thank you for thank coming you for, in. Uh, Laurie's to come. Yeah. yeah, thank you guys so yeah. much. And please, uh, as I said, we're going to lose. We have more painting to be done next year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So can I table that to the later in yeah. the meeting? Five bucks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, next on the agenda, I want to have uh, Don come up. Don, let me guess. More money. <laughs> You're dropping money there. Yeah, I've got, uh, according to the, the rules, $150 cash and checks. Okay. And uh, I got another check for thirty dollars. So I'll give you next month. And, uh, okay. I just got it tonight. So. All right. Then, uh, and uh, and I'm going to be set up with my display at Old Home Day. So hopefully we'll be bringing in uh, more collections, and then the next uh, event will be at uh, the Chili Supper, and that on the fifteenth of December. And. Uh, we hope to have a good turnout for that. Well, that's great. But, okay, now, I'm going to ask you to wear another hat. I know you're not wearing one tonight, but... Well, do we yeah. want to make a motion to accept this money for Yes, I do. I'll make a motion to accept that. Okay, I'll second that motion. And then, uh, all, in, that one all in favor of accepting $150 for donations to the Reeds Across America for Dunbar... Uh, Reeds Across Dunbar for veterans. All in favor? Aye. 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 Money's been accepted, sir. Thank you. Now you may put on your other hat. Okay. Yeah. Now the other hat you know, is a cemetery trustee. Yes. And it's come to our attention quite a bit. There's still two piles of leaves and branches here at the back of the cemetery on the inside. Okay. And there's some on the front that you can see from okay. Route 13 with a large branch sticking up like, right in front of the gravestones. And, yeah. and, and even that impedes traffic to the graves in that area. So I'm just wondering, have you guys approved to have that cleaned or is well, something Art's happened? supposed to take care of that. I will email him tonight when I get home. And now, who is our artist? Uh, uh, St. Uh, Lorne yeah. uh, has the contract for... Yeah. Which we just sent him out a check this yeah, week. Yeah, we just sent him a check there for $950. Right. The thing is, I, I would recommend you walk along the side here. See the two brush piles yeah. in the cemetery within the fencing and right in front of it. It's really distracting um, from the beauty of the town. You, okay. would, you would think that it would make it easier for him to mow or do anything in there than just removing that. Yeah. You know? So well, if uh, you can put some pressure, I mean, you guys hold the checks that he's going to get. So. Yeah. I mean, the time we want it done by the end of the month. That would be great because I think that, you know, it's been brought up to us a couple times and um, I took a walk out just the other day to, to just to follow up on it. And I see yeah. that there's, they were still there and we were kind of hoping they'd be gone by this time in the summer. So, okay. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, there's even logs back there. Not even, not only brush, there's logs that have to be. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a matter of just, I think, a, a couple pickup trucks. Yeah, there's not a lot. Maybe two pickup yeah. trucks load, but there's two piles over here on this corner and there's... A big branch and leaves up in the front, and they they just seem to be maintaining around them instead of getting rid of them. So yeah, so that was but just a. He's got to know they're there. Yeah, because he's going around them. Yeah, he's going around them. We need to get them out of there. So, so yeah, we appreciate go your ahead help with that. In fact, uh, I'll go out there and take a couple of pictures and attach it to my email, so you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, that'd be great. We say that as a courtesy to you, not we, we can't dictate to the cemetery trustees. No, 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 no. We I, say it as a courtesy. But you're 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 uh, right about it. it. Should be done. Okay. And you shouldn't be going around it like that. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'd be much appreciated. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Don. You are good. Okay. We're down, we're down a little ways here. Huh? Okay. Next one is um, we have a, a money in amount of sixty dollars that's been turned into the uh, town offices and for RSA thirty one ninety five B and number three B accept funds for sixty dollars for all the old home day table fees. And uh, I'd like to make a motion that we do ex accept the sixty dollars for that purpose. I'll second the motion. Any discussion on that? No, it's no. great to get some funds rolling for that. Just and for clarification. I want this to be a, okay. Go ahead. I was going to say for clarification, um, the past years, the old home day is limited to a fairly small budget. So through their committee members, they uh, wrestle up donations, uh, small fees that 
they could incorporate into, you know, expanding what is, you know, provided you, for the residents okay. during old home day, and that the little bit of money that they do collect will help, you know, whether it's buying, you know, things for the kids to, games or gifts or whatever, it's just a little bit more than what they have in their budget. Yeah. And uh, for the discussion, it should probably be executed in this year, it shouldn't be carried forward. And if there's any excess, uh, again, any budgetary money left over, it should be turned over back to town at the end, but I hope they use it all, and I think they will. Okay, I'll let them know that. Okay. You have a second and a first to a motion. I know. We're in discussion, I know. Any other discussion, gentlemen? No. No? No. All in favor of accepting the $60? Aye. 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 So moved to say we have accepted $60. Okay, now we're into Willie review of revenues and expenditures. And the question is, do we have money in this town? Well, it's still early in the year, but I try to um, provide the board with these reports on a quarterly basis so that you can be prepared. Um, these tools are used for our, our tax rate setting on the revenue side. Um, the expenses are is a tool that you'll use to just basically monitor where your departments are as far as their to overall expenses. Um, you have to keep in mind, though, that some of these items that don't get spent down and initially may have a contract, may have um, underlying um, required expenses that will, you know, reduce the. Um, line item as we move on through the year so I'd recommend you look through the expenses um, if you have questions we can follow up with your questions as far as the land use uh, you can see that we're way off on oh, excuse that. me the revenue I, w I still have 20,000 outstanding that's the town portion that's in the Board of Assessors approval stage so we'll have that will be up to 25 oh well so it'll be a quarter of the budget yeah um, so we're a little bit behind, but we still have a, a, quite a few out there that Coming are pending. Up. Yeah. So we're hoping to get those in. And then again, if you look at prior year revenues, that 49025 on that first line, yes. mm -hmm. that was actually reported to the town report at like twenty three or 26000 And the way the auditor um, adjusts the numbers is that anything collected in the current year actually gets applied to the old year. So you'll still see an uh, added number, a higher number for uh, actual revenues when you um, meet with the auditor to review our numbers. It's um, a cruel liability, uh, a cruel accounting is how they word it. So, but you can see that license permits and fees were at um, left to collect is forty two percent, so we're ahead there. Uh, from the state on page two, um, we always we have some numbers that we're aware of from the highway block grant. Um, we budget conservatively for the flood control based on prior year rooms and meals. Um, again, that will be something that we set at um, when we set the tax rate. We'll have those numbers. Uh, concrete numbers that we'll implement, and those are usually a given. When, is, when, do, when do they arrive in? They're very late in the year, but they they know the numbers when we set our tax rate in September, October. Okay. But we won't get the payment of uh, the last harsh part of the highway until November, and then the rooms and meals doesn't come in until like uh, first week of December or even later okay. at times. Are they far off from our anticipated projections? We won't know those actual numbers. I think we, the, the running for the past few years have been we budget conservatively. So we either pick the number from the prior year or just round it down just a, a little bit. Okay. Um, charges for services, which is a, a conglomerate of a whole bunch of revenues, where we have 40% remaining, so we're above there. And then um, you'll see some items that are in the parentheses. They're, it's a combination when you add up all the accounts they, that are based on the four-digit uh, series in the system programming. So it's a little tricky. Dave, if you want, I can go over it 
you can see there's a lot of parentheses. That means we didn't budget anything, but we actually collected it. It's the system that separates the um, revenue. But we just budgeted as a total for 30000 for example, under charges for service. It's broken down into about 15 accounts, but overall it's 30, but we're above that number. Right just now. over half the year, we're at 57%, so we should be yep. on target to yep. hit our goals. Yeah, because we have some big ticket items, like the rooms and meals, highway block grant, there's uh, 50,000 there. Uh, flood control, that's another 70,000 there. So I think those items will you'll see that. Um, the only thing I didn't understand is you're averaging on the land use tax changes. Mm -hmm. You yep. said that 49 doesn't calculate the prior year. It's prior year plus it. It's actually of the year before. Um, prior year, if you look at the town report, it I reported like uh, less than thirty thousand dollars. So how can you ever look at this to get an accurate number if it doesn't show it? Um, what happens is she write, if you write a warrant for a tax in December and you collect it in January or February, mm -hmm. it actually gets posted back to December. I see. So it's, a, it's an accrual accounting. So um, you collect it in the current year, but it's... It's actually applied to the old... Previous year. Right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And it's only that line item that does it or... Yep. Okay. Uh, anything related to taxes. But everything else would be current year, like vehicle registration, um, general revenue. No, mo motor vehicle permits were only at 43%. Correct. But if you look at the left-hand column where the numbers are, yeah. uh, the account numbers, there's actually one, two, three, four numbers that in the middle, let's say 3220, those are actually the numbers combined to be her budgeted number. Oh, okay. So you have to really add the 5,800, the 30, 340,000, and then the other two items, which is about $1,000. So overall, there's a few of these accounts that we'll be adding them together. That's the that's why you have parentheses around them, so that I count Correct. twice. Correct. Right. Yep. So it's, it's, we do budget a number, a, a, a number in that line item, but the system breaks it out. In so detail. you're a little bit higher than that percentage. Yep. For 40, yep. You have to include those other items. But the, the rate they motor vehicles in the last in the last uh, the last two weeks have been crazy in there. Mm -hmm. She's been above every month that she's reported. She's been above her uh, prior year uh, revenue. It's all those new cars up there. Bob, any questions? No. No, I think they're they're good. We'll look at that and these will be watching these connections. Now the, on the expense side, um, I looked at we have the uh, painting quotes. I wanted to make sure that we have I thought we had about forty nine thousand dollars left in our maintenance budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what you currently see there says 51,477. We have two bills that we have not paid out of this account yet, but they're minor. Fire department uh, lighting was 4913, which we approved a couple weeks ago. Right. And then um, the lighting grant with the uh, utility right. for the highway, we actually paid a, a portion of it. There was a 2,700 that was paid last week as. A deposit per the contract okay. so there's only a thousand outstanding on that so we're only looking at about six grand less than what you see there for 5144 47 the thing is we should have what page do you want three on page three of the gotcha. expenses gotcha. what's and the uh, administration general government buildings section? that is actually lawn care that will oh, okay. take cover our um, Right. Fall cleanup for yep. the school and the, the town common here. So our actual budget remaining in um, building, town building maintenance and improvements is forty five four seventy seven. That's after you took it out those uh, those two items two still items. pending. I see the gasoline and diesel. That's uh, it's kind of a pass through. We budget a small amount because there is um. Yeah, we the, just had the bill come in this week for those. Correct. Um, the department's budget. 
uh, fuel in their lines, mm -hmm. but in order to control it, it gives them um, more responsibility of tracking their own expenses. And then we have to budget just a, a small base amount for incidentals, like the um, school generator comes out of there mm -hmm. for the testing and whatnot, and the highway will inspect that on a monthly basis and top it off uh, for fuel so levels. So twenty six six fifty five left if you go one price. I'm just, Wait. I'm just making an assumption here. Be a little bit more than that, or is, how much was the second deduct for? What's that? How much was the second deduct? Well, no, I was looking at what she gave us for a number, and I'm just checking yeah. to see if there's money to do one of these votes. Do, do we want to discuss the? Uh, are we done with the budget discussion for the time? Yes, yeah, I think the, it was pretty much looking at the government buildings. I think we can go right into that unless the chief has something he wanted to bring up to. <clears throat> well, I think it's um. Well, we can go right into yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. All right, um, let's let's go back. Obviously, we haven't enough money in the, to we accept any of the quotes. And the question is of the free quotes. Um, I'm open. To, I'll open this up again. Of, uh, I have my own feelings, but the thing is, I like to hear from you all. So I think as I, well, the thing is, the, the the quote with the company which did not provide an updated bid. I went to the the website and um, they do more than just painting. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, a property a, services company. exactly. And uh, they haven't been, in my mind, they, they've been uh, doing painting, but it's basically a servicing of properties. Uh, but Whereas these other two seem to have more um, experience with the painting. And I think the uh, one of the things you talked about was just uh, some general technical questions that you had that were not answered yeah. accurately compared to. Just to go over the uh, some of the questions we had was about how they were stripping, how they were priming. Uh, one of the biggest things that come up when we were talking to him is the fact that um, on tunnel restorations, I felt he had a, a lot better way of sealing the existing nails so that they don't bleed back through the paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereas when we talked to the other company, uh, Reliable, that was here again tonight, they were using their primer more to seal those exterior paints, which um, Tuttle described that there's a lot of bleed through in that, and he seals them separately um, as he sees them exposed when he's doing the grinding on the on the building. So it was my thought that in looking at how he has done similar um, historical type homes around town and the way that he is uh, running his business, and his additional warranty was much longer than the uh, you know he's giving us a 10-year warranty no peel uh, he does make an exception down by the water table and the uh the roof splashback areas which i think would be common with anybody because you're going to get exposed areas there after a short period of time but and uh, in, in going through those phone conversations with the three different companies and mike and i were lucky to get all three of them on the phone that one day it was within minutes of each other it was amazing so um in my own personal, I know that um, Tuttle's was a little bit higher than um, KGB. KGB, but I thought the town would get a much better job um, using Tuttle. Well, I got, the only thing that's problematic for uh, your reliable is we didn't <clears throat> put out a uh, request, uh, request a, a bid. Yep. Performance so that he comes in over the ten grand again, you know. Yep. And technically, uh, if someone held our feet to the fire, I think they might say, you know, I thought over ten thousand dollars, we're supposed to have a bid proposal that they all adhere to, you know, and we didn't do that. So it kind of excludes them as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, I understand, you know, a lot of times they say low bid, but I have to tell you that I'm looking at Tuttle's also. I, I was doing that while yeah. they were here talking anyways, only because I already disqualified one 
right. in my mind. Yeah. So I'm looking at the two and, uh, you know, I, I wasn't part and parcel to the questions you asked, but you're right. Sometimes you get nails going into a building that aren't galvanized. Yeah. And what happens is within a couple of years, you start to see that little yellowish start to show yep. underneath, you know, so. Yeah, the bleed through, and he, he to me had the best explanation of that, and he brought it up to us. We didn't have to bring that up right. to him. But when we did go through it, we did, uh, KGB. we did, yeah, it was like, it was we like, did keep it similar, you know, oil-based primers, we wanted it brushed into the wood grain. We wanted the cracks all sealed, caulked, um, a good high quality. I, I'm glad you're going to take the precautions against lead yep. because it's grinding right. right away. And the standards, which there's no standards, is how we accept anything. Yep. It's the standards for the employers. They recommend no sanding, mm -hmm. no grinding. But I don't think there's a lot of lead here. So he's taken the precautions. He's mentioned using HEPA filters, yep. which is a good thing if you... Can only help, I guess, too. If he encapsulates, then that's what he would need. Yep. Uh, and uh, evidently, he's going to be careful with himself because uh, if there is lead, remo uh, lead paint removal, yep. it builds up in your blood. They take a blood test before you strip it. They take a blood test after, and it's to see what the level of lead is in your system. Yep. You know, so, uh, I, I'm comfortable with his number. Uh, you know, we all thought numbers were going to be a little bit better than they were. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, Dave and I walked around the building because I wanted him to see that side of the building. That's how we found the other pile of leaves and brush in the cemetery. Yeah. But, I mean, the pieces come right off. I mean, you can peel it right off. There's no primer underneath mm -hmm. on that side. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything's just kind of curling up. Yeah. You know, so. And I do want to say, you know, I'm glad that Reliable came back and looked at it because I think he did bring his number down substantially even though yeah. it isn't it isn't under the 10 like Bob said, which uh, we do have two under that. So, um, you know, so we I think we did our due diligence by at least having two under that. But I feel that for for the town's money, um, Tubb was going to do a far superior job as far as his... Well, I think Reliable would have done a good job too, but the thing is, again, it's the threshold they hit. Right. And they kind of like almost took them out. We didn't give them the, the guidelines, but again, we can't dictate prices either. Right. And you're looking at two painters that uh, complement each other yep. as far as the work they do. So when you can save uh, three, four thousand dollars, I mean, that's, our, that's, that's, that's a big line. difference. Yeah. That's a big difference, you know. So I, I, I'm, I'm hearing a consensus then. Let's, uh, shall we make a motion on this? Yeah, let's see why we wouldn't. I'd like to get going with this work. Yeah, we've got to get some buildings. It's the summer months, and if we don't get it now yeah. with the rain we've been having this season, we'll never get it in. Okay, so... Uh, Thank God they're putting the bridge in this year. <laughs> I'll make a motion <laughs> to uh, accept Don Tuttle's proposal from Restorative Painting, where New Hampshire, uh, to paint all four sides of the town hall building that we're sitting in now. Uh, referencing his proposal here with a cap on it of 9750 but hopefully coming in at the 9300 which we see on his quote which is an average um, but i want to accept it at the capped level only for the fact that if he does come into some more rock he has the ability to fix that rock but i'll have to come back more money right so um wait a second well, I'll second it so we can have a little discussion. Bit, a little discussion. Okay. Yeah. Now, did you see? Did you see how he did it, Bob? Did you, I added the numbers up a couple times while right. we were talking, and I was a little, I was a little confused. But what he did is he took a total deposit of twenty-seven twenty, and then each Thursday, the weeks after that, sixteen forty-five, which brought him to a total of ninety-three hundred, and he capped his proposal off at ninety-seven fifty. Um, with a low of 88.50, meaning that if he runs into a little less rock, <coughs> right, he's going right. to save the town money. And I don't think, without at least putting the cap in there of the proposal, that you know he'll be keep coming back to the board. Right. I, without a cap, I would say I would have a, again a problem because yeah. he's just about near the end right. of being going over 10,000. You don't want someone coming back to you and saying. I need another four hundred dollars. Right. 
because then that would have been a whole different ball of wax. So, so I maybe just, I could reword this, Bible. Why don't we accept his quote at ninety three hundred dollars with a cap on it of ninety seven fifty? Well, you know, and again, only because he has a low estimate. Yeah, I say that, that we accept his bid with a cap of ninety seven fifty. Okay, that no more than ninety seven fifty. Yep. So he understands it. That's the end of the line. You know, he just said before sometimes. He gets a little fussier, and they'll do things. Uh, I was, I was taking that he might, he might do a little bit more work on his own account, and you know, spend. Well, more and that's time. what I'm getting yeah. at. Just so he understands it, that, you know, right. just like uh, if we're he spends an extra feet day, day on our feet are held to the fire. Right, right. right. Um, I'm in agreement with that. But should we clear up the wording on it somehow, other than that, in the motion, or just state the capped amount? Just state the capped amount that it. Should not exceed the 9750. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Can, cannot exceed. Yep. Put it that way. Cannot exceed the 9750. And um, another thing of discussion uh, the red accents. I thought that was a good idea. I said, go on, go for it. This is not a historical building per se. And if it's a little bit of. Uh, what did you say? The red, a red accents. Did you say this is not a historical building? Correct. Not relative to the building. You better tell some of the people who went to school here. Yeah, like me. Do you want red accents, my friend? I don't. I don't think myself that we should change the color of any building without going in front of the voters okay. with the colors. Okay. I would be way afraid to do that. Yeah. I. You know. I'm not turned on by red either. Uh, why do we? Have I like. Who did I like, the red doors? I like barn red myself, but I would not want to accent a town building without putting it in front of the voters. I can tell okay. you that. I think the previous um, doors before these were installed were red. They've bird. been red for a long time. Been, I'm pretty sure, time. like yeah. that barn red color. Okay. I, so I want to when we make when we talk to them, no red accents. Then. Yes, that would be right. correct. Yeah. No right. red accents. We'll put that right in the meeting yeah. minutes. Do you know if he's going to be painting the doors or just the building? It looked like the building, and it said that it excluded inside these windows, which is normal. So they're not taking these storms off and doing those windows individually. Okay. All right, so they're going around the frames of the windows, but not taking those off. It was very clear to exclude those in there. We could ask them about the doors, though. That's a question we should have asked them. Yeah. yeah. I would think, you know, you're painting the whole exterior there. I would think that those doors are included. He excluded these windows. Because they have storms over them and taken a lot of additional work, and right. we would have put them up over the ten. I'm sure to do that. Okay. Any other further questions? Should we ask them about? We can ask them about the doors, though. Yep. Okay. okay. This is my question. We were talking about the doors being red, and, the, and that's why he agreed with the details. The so accenting. The way I took it, he, the doors are exterior. So. Okay. The way I heard it, he included the doors. Yeah. And the doors would need a quick, if it's like an animal, would take a, make it need a quick sanding and that. Not talk over that. Okay, then all in favor of accepting the proposal as stipulated by Dave from Tuttle Restorative Painting, say aye. Aye. Do you have the original? Do you want to sign I that? do. They're still in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't run out there no less than about the doors. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, we have we have to start attacking some of the stuff that's in front of us. Okay, so that was uh uh, mission accomplished. Thank you, gentlemen. I, as I said, I learned more about painting than I wanted to know. Well, you're going to need it for the rest of the day. I tell you, and the things we do have them, I think next year will be, uh, this budget season, as we go forward, we should uh, make sure we appropriate the, uh, plan appropriate the amount of money we need to do some of the other buildings, too. Well, now you have an idea of... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next thing. Dave, I think you're up. Okay, and the thing is, I think you're going to have to sit on the other side, sir. Yep, I'd like to recuse myself from the meeting at this point. So recused. Oops. Okay, Dave.
gave the floor is yours as resident of Kelsey Road. I did an email um, yesterday in reference to Kelsey Road from my attorney. Yes. And um, it didn't seem to bother me too much in the morning, but as I was working, driving around, it um, started irritating me pretty badly. And uh, enough so I felt I had to bring it up to the other selectmen. Um, I got an email from the town's attorney stating that he was an attorney that worked for my prior um, defense attorney when the town was sued and I was sued for Mike Guiney. And so he worked for Jed Callan's office, who was my attorney, as an intern attorney at that time. And I remember when he came on board there, and I didn't really remember his name through all the dealings we did here, but his name sounded familiar to me. And as part of the court case, we're providing information back and forth to the different parties, and that's part of the process right now. And part of this process, he comes up and says that, you know, he might have a conflict of interest, basically, because he was working uh, for the attorney that I had hired to defend myself back when Guiney sued the town of Dunbar and myself. And so he worked there and he actually went to the court case that was there. So as part of his work there, he says that even though in his memory he doesn't have any attorney work client privilege information as far as he can remember, but he worked on my case with my attorney and actually went as a defense attorney for me through there, which is a great conflict of interest, something that should never have happened. And how we're at this point, and learning this at this point, when Steve Whitley knew what companies he worked for prior and has been working with the town on this case for the past year and a half or two years is just beyond me that this is coming up in what I consider the 11th hour. And um, so he's asked if we had any objections to it as well as the other attorney. And my attorney clearly stated to me, he says, Dave, typically objections come from one side objecting to what the other side does. They don't typically come from the same side looking at their side saying, I, I want to bring this objection up. So um, the more I thought about it, I just, it, it was unbelievable to me that he had been working on this thing for a year and a half or two years within the town. He just brings it up now. And not brought it up to the prior selectman, to the town administrator, to these two selectmen. I'm not sure if I, I'd have to check records, but I think there was a similar letter that came out before, but it was basically... A disclosure that said that he worked under, and I didn't understand the firm mm -hmm. relation. I, you know, who was. Well, you probably, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't have to, because, yeah, yeah you know, it's not your job to. But I just, I was, so upset to hear this because the other problem with Kelsey Road I have is, is um, I've given them the information I have, all the maps showing where the road was. Yeah. Mike Guiney's um, surveyor had done the same thing. The townspeople clearly stated in our town meeting that they wanted Guiney Road to be continued to be maintained as it had in the past years, 60 or 70 years, used the same way and maintained the same way. In other words, they did not want to discontinue the last 127 feet of Kelsey Road and were supposed to be continuing the maintenance on that road right now up to the same standards as the rest of the road, which is kind of questionable and I've been letting it slide there grading it as much as they can in between the posts. They're plowing it as much as they can in between the posts. But the posts are in the way of doing the proper maintenance on the road like they do on the rest of the road. And those posts are not allowing the town to maintain it to the same standards they are before. Now I had given this board all of the RSAs stating that after a town had maintained a portion of road for over a 10 year period of time, they're to do so at that same exact rate, in other words, not be changed, any portion of the road. And um, that, to me, isn't really being followed because we're kind of working around, you know, obstacles in the road. And um, the fact that this is coming up from this attorney at this 11th hour, because what I see is the attorney that the town is using is, is following what the prior selectman had set him up to do. In other words, the town's not defending our rights to Kelsey Road like the townspeople, the legislative body, have asked the selectmen to do at that meeting. At that meeting, they tried to discontinue Kelsey Road. The townspeople said they did not want to discontinue it. They wanted to keep maintaining it the way it always has. That's our legislative body 
and the selectmen speak for that legislative body. Now, these prior select group, selectmen's group, chose to go, I believe, on limiting the liability on that section of road from the town, and in doing so, they're abandoning the town's responsibilities to that section of road. So they're not maintaining it to the same standard, and this new select group may not want to sue its residents for going home on a section of road that the townspeople said they wanted to keep open. So I think we need to, we're at a breach now where we can't even use this attorney to defend the, the town at this point, but we also, at this breach, we need to look at whether you two as selectmen want to keep going against the will of the people that spoke at that town meeting. Because that's going to come up to bear on you guys as selectmen, not the prior group, because they're gone now. So when it comes to town meeting, you guys will have to get up and explain why we use such amount of attorney's fees and this and that when the legislative body, our townspeople, have said they did not want to discontinue Kelsey Road. And if you talk with our road agent after that town meeting, he thought the road issue was done because the townspeople had spoken. And then we went into this whole other year of not, you know, trying to limit the town's liability to that section of road. The town can't run from its liability on the last 127 feet of the road no more than it can on the rest of the road or any road out here for that matter. Or the one going in front of your home. But this is what has evolved from the prior select group. So I think we need to look at that. And now that this point has come up where, you know, I can see with this attorney, he actually worked for me before. Can't be, he can't have knowledge from the background of one side and continue working for the town on this. So Can I ask a couple of questions? Yeah. Was he working for that law firm as an intern or was he actively defending your case? He was working as a full-time one of three attorneys for that law firm. And he did handle paperwork as Jed Callan was overwhelmed on my court case. I didn't remember his name, but he was one of the ones working on it. And he went to the court case, prior court case, on my side with Jed Callan. So that's a question that your attorney could ask the judge. Not the judge. It's a it's a matter of that. Well, the judge would disqualify him if he wasn't if he had a conflict. Well, your attorney is saying here's a possible conflict. What do you want to do about it? And we're going to object to it, obviously, right. because and I that's didn't what I'm saying. That's the only person that can make right. that decision. You know, the other part of that, though, is with, with Kelsey Road, and I'm just thinking, is I think the part that's in dispute yeah. in that area is uh, problematic for us to address. To be it honest. may be, it they, may be, Bob, but that's it's soon, sooner or later you guys are going to get a settlement one way or the other. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, whoever prevails prevails, and and you know we'd stand behind whatever the decision is. But that part of the road where he's got the post, and technically, I guess the post could be on his land. Well, you know we don't. Technically, you, Bob. You see what I'm saying? I is, do see what you're saying, but let me follow through with something. The town's attorney, through the last select board, tried to discontinue the last 127 I, I was at the road. meeting when they... You were at the meeting. The townspeople said, we don't want to discontinue the last 127 feet of Kelsey Road. We've been plowing and maintaining for the last 60, 70, 80 years. We want to continue maintaining it. So that means once that legislative body has made that decision, but, even though it's problematic, the town should be defending its rights to that road, not Dave Nong. Yeah, no, but Dave, I, and I understand, but the town didn't say the 127 feet. The, the town, town said 127 the town said, feet. The town said Kelsey Road. No, they said they 127 want, feet. That's where the argument is. And like I say, I, you know, I'm not going to weigh in on something that should be decided judicially, not, you know, not... What I want you to weigh in on, Bob, is what the townspeople spoke to. It did say 127 feet. They tried to discontinue the last and, 127 and, feet and of Kelsey Dave Road. Dave is still, and they're still maintaining it. To a limited I understand. Still, and they're actually maintaining it to the same standard, I think, that they have in the past. No, they're not. That's what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. We're working around posts and trying to maintain it, but they can't maintain it to the same as the past. Like, well, you can't roll the snow off with the wing. 
because the posts are in the way. So we're plowing a very limited section, we're grading a very limited section, and it's an issue and a problem. And I understand what you're saying, but that wouldn't be any different than the person wanting to put up two fences, which would be more restrictive along that road that goes through their property. So I don't know. Sure, it would be because it's 50 foot right of way on that road, so they'd have to be with outside the 50 feet, not in the 16 foot section. They'd have to be without the 50 foot right of way, Bob. That's a three rod road, class five road. Is it a class five or is it? It's class five, three rod road. It's a class five? It's, it's three gotta rod. Be, it's got to be three rods. 16.6 like, feet is a rod. It's on every map I showed you guys. So, so those posts would have to be outside that 50 foot right away, any portion of that road. But my point is, now that the town's people have spoken, and a whole bunch of them want to come in and meet with this new select board, but I've been holding off to wait to see where this is going to go. But I think we're at a crossroads here because that attorney can no longer handle this case from what I understand. And he can't use that firm before because that firm now is tainted because he hasn't brought this up as an issue. So we're at a crossroads where you guys are going to have to make some big decisions. But what I want to know is, as the two selectmen, are you going to upheld what the townspeople said in that meeting? In other words, to not discontinue the road and maintain it as it always has been. Because right now, I'm having to fight for the town's rights of the road. In other words, I'm the one having to prove where the road went, how it's gone, and I'm going to have to prove a survey on that section of road which should have been done by the town long ago, which two select boards back said they were going to do. But all that expense is coming on to me, Bob, where it shouldn't be because the townspeople have said they do not want to discontinue that last section of road. <clears throat> so why should I be carrying the burden because the town is suing me to come to my own house every night? I mean, this is going to cost me thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to defend my rights to drive home every night. And I drive home on a town road where the town people said they didn't want to discontinue. And a lot of the town people are upset because why are the towns suing you, Dave? You just drive home. Did you put the post in the road? No. My guy put the post in the road, in the town section of the road, not me. So we have to cross some roads here, and you guys well, are going to be making these decisions. And again, I'm looking at it's a disputed area. you know. Uh, but it's a disputed area between the town and Mike Guiney, not me. I don't own that section of road. The town does. So when you look at it, Mike Guiney's not touching my right of way. My right of way is open and clear, 50 feet yeah. wide. He doesn't have a thing in it. Right. Mike Guiney is touching the town portion of road, the same town portion that these taxpayers have said, the legislative body, as you brought up earlier tonight, Mike, that they did not want to discontinue that section of road. They want to continue maintaining it and using it as we always have as a town, including our turning around and everything else. And I asked Steve Whitley after that motion was made by the townspeople, Steve Whitley was there sitting right next to the selectman. I said, so that means... If this road does not get discontinued tonight, the town will have to continue maintaining it because they've done so for over, it says in the RSA, 10 years. And he says, you're correct, Mr. Nolte, they will have to. So I'm, I'm taking the whole responsibility of this road on for the townspeople. I should not be. After that legislative body has spoke, these, this select board should be taking that defense on for, for the town in protecting my rights to go home on that road. Not me. I shouldn't have to defend it. Right now, the townspeople, the selectmen, are washing their hands of it. I'm not, <coughs> I wouldn't say that. I'm saying we're going to let the judicial system work. No, because if you look at how the lawsuit was filed, it was filed stating that the town of Dunbarton believes they have no rights to that section of road. No. Okay. That's how it was filed, Mike. So. They're going directly against the legislative body, which is the voters, by saying that in that lawsuit. I, I don't think that's the intent of what was filed. If you read how it was filed, that's how it was filed, regardless of what you think the intent was. <clears throat> we are not backing up our rights to that road, which the townspeople have asked us to do. And when I asked this, the other selectmen directly about it, they stated that they were looking out for the liability of the town. In other words, if the town can get it so they're not responsible for the last 127 feet, then they lose the liability of that area, supposedly. But the 
Tons of people have spoken at that town meeting. But I thought it was a controversy of uh, no. right away, or is it a road? No, the road was not accepted. The my right away cannot change. It's right there. It has meets and bounds. Right, and I don't want to get in debate over this because I'm not the subject matter expert here on this. Right, but you you need to get someone be a, somewhat of an expert because the townspeople have spoken one way, and this court case is bringing it a whole different way where I have to take on the responsibility of that section of road and prove that our last three road agents have maintained it. You guys aren't doing that. I'm having to do that. You guys should be doing that, but you're not. If you look at the defense of the attorney, they have said that the town believes that section of road is not theirs. Even after these voters have spoken, that's what the lawsuit says. And so if you guys want to have a separate meeting to talk about it, we can, but that's what that lawsuit says. I, I there are two issues here that he's bringing up. One is the, um, what is the, the attorney, whether there's a uh, conflict of interest, which I was not fully aware of that particular uh, issue. I'd have to research to see if he's... Had you guys been brought up to date on that in the last couple of days? No. Yes. Oh. Just, oh, oh, I forwarded okay. an email. But he, it, I thought it was a disclosure, saying that I'm informing you that I was involved. And, and it sounded more like he was just an intern. I don't I don't understand I the that. whole... He said in that, in that email he was a full-time attorney, one of three for the firm. He sat in on the court case, and he can't remember handling it, but I remember Jed Callen pushing stuff off. There was a woman attorney and him, yeah. and I didn't remember his name from that time ago. Well, on behalf of the town, we'll make an inquiry into that. Yeah. That's yeah. issue one. The, the second issue is, uh, again, uh, it's, a, it's a thing about property rights, it's a thing about right-of-ways, and the thing is about road acceptances, all of the above. And that's well, Mike, you're, you're wrong. It's, uh, you guys are looking at it like there's a dispute amongst me and Guiney on where that road is. It's not. It's a dispute with the town of Dunbar and, and Mike Guiney where that road is. I'm having to take the responsibility of the township on here because the town's not doing it. The town should be researching this with their prior um, road agents. Jeff Crosby has talked to him. He said right in this board, I've talked to all three of the past ones. They've all maintained it to the barn, turned around in front of the barn. But if you look, you guys don't have him on. None of, you, none of your witnesses are our previous road agents. You guys are taking the responsibility of the town away from this section of road, throwing it on Dave Nault, and it's going to cost me thirty dollars or $40,000 to defend my rights to this town road, which I should have access to use as a taxpayer, especially after the legislative body has spoken. And yet if you look at that lawsuit, the town is wiping its hands free of any um, any part of that road. I, but the thing is, I was understanding that the road was under dispute. Or whether it's, and in fact, Mike Guiney's uh, perspective, the road veered one way, and you saw it veered another way, and you, all you had was a right of way, and that was not the road. And that's, the thing is, arguments... My right of way comes up and meets the road. That's the way the meets and bounds showed on the map, the two previous landowners okay. of Mike Guiney and myself showed meeting the road. Okay, so the last 127 feet of that road is in dispute between the town and Mike Guiney. I only use the road to go home. I should not be defending the town's rights to that road. The town You're talking should about the, the, the portion of the right of way that's in front of his house. That's right, the last 127 feet. feet. The same portion we've been using for the last 60 or 70 years to turn around. Well, and the same portion that the taxpayers have said they want to continue using so and what, do not want to is, discontinue. What is the point here? You want the town to do more for you? or Not more for me. I want the town to accept their rights to using that road after the townspeople have spoken at that meeting. And so they've said they do not want to discontinue that section of road. Once you've been maintaining it for 60, 70 years, that is the town. And that is, as I understand, that is in dispute. Legal dispute. What's in dispute? The, the fact that we maintained it? Yes, continuously for that long a time. We have three living road agents. They should be in front of you talking to you. I'm not, not going to take depositions from a, from a legal... I'm not asking you to take a deposition, just ask them. The thing is, They're I, living in town. But that's where it's going to be brought out in court. Can I just say, Dave, I think the what, at one point, Mike Guiney sat here and told the selectman, I don't want you turning around in front of my barn. That's right. And that's what... That's and the townspeople spoke at that meeting and said, 
He Listen, wasn't present at that meeting. Doesn't but, matter no, if he's present no, or not. I, I understand. The town people ask but to he, keep that roadway open. And one not way to continue. resolve it would be for the town to buy that section from Mike Guy. Whatever the town has to do. But right now, Lean, yeah. I am taking the town side. I have to get all this information from the town and our previous road agents, all that, present it to protect my rights to go to my house. When the town people have already spoken to this at a town meeting and said they did not want that road discontinued. That means it stays a town road. Whether the town has to buy it, whether the town has to defend it in court, whatever. But right now, if you read the lawsuit, we're not defending the town's rights to that road. We're walking away from them. We're leaving Dave Nault high and dry to spend his money, my son's money, and my daughter-in-law's money to defend the town's rights. So I'm asking you two as selectmen to read that lawsuit over. Uh, well, uh, because we're not you know, defending the town's rights on that lawsuit. You know, Dave, I, I saw the information you presented. Mm -hmm. Very credible. So was the information that Mike Guiney gave it. So if you ask me, black or white, is that uh, Kelsey Road? To be real honest, after looking at all of the documents that we've been handed, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you. Okay. I couldn't tell you. But what did the townspeople say, Bob? What did they say? You were there at that. What all did right. they say they wanted? They said to Kelsey Road. That's is that right. Kelsey Road? They said they want to keep maintaining answer, Kelsey Road. Answer my question. Is that Kelsey Road? To you it is, because yeah. it should be. The last 127 feet is documents. what was on that meeting. Looking at the documents that we were presented to look at and study, because I went through that whole dossier he has of the going through all the deeds and everything, yeah. as well as all the information, I'd be confused. So I don't know if I'd be making the right call. It, you know, all I can I'm, tell you is it can be settled judicially. Unfortunately, I know you're at the brunt of it because but you're on you the other side. You of, guys are settling this judicially. You're not taking the side that the taxpayers have told you to take and say, we do not want to discontinue that last 127 feet of Kelsey Road that the townspeople tried to discontinue at that If meeting. that was Kelsey Road. Listen, this, the, this is what the townspeople confusion. have said. Well, The last 127 feet, they did not want to discontinue, Bob. Okay? I'm going the townspeople said they wanted to continue right. maintaining it. All right, I'm going to call this to order. Uh, again, um, We'll make an inquiry to the lawyer for some clarification. We'll also, for, about the issue, uh, Bob brings a good point. I think there's a good point. I think we should review the, uh, the uh, conflict of interest. I, I, I believe that, I think as a citizen, you owe, you owe that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we'll take those two for action and we'll sit down and maybe we'll, we'll chat with the lawyer again uh, to see where we are with that. Yeah. And see, I want to be educated again because I did sit down with him already for maybe three hours yeah. and trying to be, put my head around what was going on. And uh, but at this point, it's not worth arguing because we don't have we're not subject matter experts here. One thing I'm not asking you to be subject matter experts, mm -hmm. but we are not following, and this is going to come out. We are not following what the townspeople, the legislative body of this town, asked the selectmen to do for them. They said they wanted to keep that section of Kelsey Road open, the last 127 feet, maintain it as we always have, and not discontinue it. So if it wasn't discontinued at that meeting, the last 127 feet that this town and the last board put together, then that is the town road, because the legislative body has said they did not want to discontinue it. So that's the town road. So what I want out of these selectmen is to defend that section of road, and we're not defending it right now. Well, what we're doing is we're walking away from it as a select group, and I need that you guys to look at that part of it. Because if you read the lawsuit, Mike, mm -hmm. Which the I attorney has set that up and is basically walking away from the rights to that section of road. And he's leaving it to Dave Nall to defend, and that's not right. He's looking for an impartial... Dave Nall has an opinion on regarding it. Mike Gandhi has an opinion. And the town and you, made an opinion. And the town has taken the... Um, is a uh, letting the impartial person look at all the facts laid out to them. And they Listen, don't... they're not. Read the lawsuit. If that was the case, I would have no trouble with it. But if you read the lawsuit, they're taking Mike Guiney's side. In other words, they're saying, we don't believe we have any rights to that section of road. Read the lawsuit, which is directly opposite of what the legislative body has asked the selectmen to do. And so they're taking a side. They're taking Mike Guiney's side, and that's wrong. It's not an impartial decision. 
that your attorney is asking for. So what I'm asking you guys to do is look deep no, in your soul and understand what the legislative body said, even if you need to redo the minutes of that meeting. I'll look at that, because I wasn't there. I was out of town due to a death. Yeah. I, normally, I've, I've been to every other town meeting, with the exception of that one recently. And read the lawsuit, Mike. If you read it, the town is... They're walking away from their rights to that road. Jeff Grosby can't believe it, our road agent. Yeah. He says, after that meeting... That's hearsay. That don't meeting. speak for Dave. That's, that's, that's hearsay. I don't want to... Uh, it's not hearsay. Ask him. He he's said, not here to defend He him. said it right in the meeting. Okay. I think you may be wrong about, you know... Uh, what do you think I might be wrong no, about? I, I think you may be wrong as to what position the town's taking. But, and I, and I, I won't go any further than that. I, I would I would like to think I'm wrong with it, Bob. But if you look right. at if you look at the lawsuit, All right. it's I, black I, and white. I will uh, I will we'll take another look. Okay. And I think that's uh, that's that's what you're asking us to Can do. You get us a copy of what the lawsuit. And uh, I think it's fair. I would because we're kind of at a we're at a point here yeah. where some things you guys are going to need to make some big decisions here, Mike. Right. And so the thing is, we'll take another look at the lawsuit. Those are, those are two things. Yep. As I said the conflict of interest. We already we know about that. We yep. agree about that. That needs to be looked at. Because it's your understanding of it and my understanding are completely different, so I'd like to see a copy of it. Yeah, yeah. Of the lawsuit, so you mean, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was hoping yeah. you guys would yeah. do because our legislative body has spoken. I know that you guys are concerned about doing what the legislative body, we talk about it almost every meeting, and you want to do what the legislative body has set out to do, and so... I think that that needs to be looked at the way that lawsuit was set up because it's not impartial. Well, till I till I take a look at it, I yeah, really don't it's worth it's worth a review. Okay, no. uh, I'll, I'll give you that. And that's all I had. Okay, I think that's a, we'll bring that to a close. The section will close it, yeah. and we'll take those two for action items. Okay, that's all I had. Come on, son. Okay. Lower have some your voice, though. Have some coffee. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Thank you guys for listening. Back on the board. board. All right. I want to make sure my, uh, Corrine, how are you doing? Yep. Two issues. One, two. Again. Okay. All right. We're going to talk about um, General Tom Business. That's the inbox. Oh, for, uh, let me just talk. This came in the inbox. Uh, kudos to uh, our town clerk's office. Uh, they basically they got inspected by the um, Department of Motor Vehicles, Department of Safety, Division of Motor Vehicles, and Dunbar is generally in compliance with the applicable statutes, rules, and procedures. The physical setup of the agent's office and procedures in place provide adequate security for the revenue and inventories entrusted to the agent. At the conclusion of the audit, all inventory items entrusted were were account, given to the agent were accounted for. So that's an FYI. Oh, did I sign that? Yeah, no, you did not. But Kudos to our town clerk and her staff. Can I take a look at that too, if you Please. Can, Dave? If the last page is conclusion, that's what I read. There's a lot of stuff in there, but the, if you go to the last page, you can see exactly what they did. Okay. And just uh, everyone signed off it, just the uh, road agent, uh, we got a, re a copy of the report of the historical value of our bridge on Mansion Road Bridge. Um, that can be filed. Is our new bridge going to have the stones in it that one showed? I don't think so. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, pre <laughs> it's going to be, it's precast. It's the next generation. Is this yeah. so it's classified as a historical? It is not. not. It's no. not. not. No. They, we were required to do an historical evaluation to see if it had any historical significance. It was declared to have little not of it. Eligible. Not eligible. Yeah. I would be surprised if John Karanikas didn't do all that stone work. I think oh, you're right. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got a, um, I want this passed on to the road agent somehow. He participated in the reading program, the Hampshire reading program. Who's that? Dear Mr. Crosby. No, that was a touch of truck, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. But he was involved. He was involved. He went there for the. He provided equipment for the librarian Mary Gerard, 
to hold an event for the readers of uh, the young readers in Denmark. Yes. Which was the Touch a Truck. Touch a Truck program, correct. Yeah. And uh, it's a nice little thank you note. Uh, thank you, Mary G. And I just uh, 50 kids, 50 children showed up for the event, so that was a uh, that was a uh, for Dunbar, and that's that was that's overwhelming. If you want to take a look at that. Did uh, we want to send it in, Jeff, from our board in reference to it, or uh, not this time? I, I'd say we just uh, passed it on to him at this point. Yeah, he had, he he actually read it, and I asked him to leave it for you guys to read. So he received he got it personally. So. Nice letter to get though. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Nope. Our librarian is very uh, thoughtful and recognizing everyone that mm. helps her out. All right. Um, we had a uh, inquiry about the uh, Dunbar and Historical Awareness Committee made a uh, made some actions and uh, within their committee. And if you recall, I'm not going to sit and go into the details of because some of it was in the non-public section. But we reached out to the New Hampshire Municipal Association for some uh, uh, guidance regarding a, a volunteer committee to change um, appointments and change um, the term, 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 term of someone seating the board. And it's a, it's the board that makes the uh, the select board that makes any changes to the terms. And uh, we're gonna. This is this response. If you would take a gander at that, it's our response back to the committee and uh, if there's an issue with some employee I recommend that they make recommendations and uh, they can come forward with to the board in a public session make those recommendations and well, that's not an employee also volunteer committee committee, committee, committee members. Volunteer, yeah, committee yeah. Members. that's the same employee yes I stand yeah. corrected yeah. <laughs> well I think when they might have worded it back they said committee member or employee that might be why right. uh, but I think it's, uh, as the uh, as the chairman of the board they can make recommendations and pass them on to this select committee, and then uh, we can uh, adjudicate as needed. Right. Yeah, and they did ask us for our input on that, yeah. if you'll remember. So I think uh, getting this uh, response, I think, is good from the Municipal Association. Yeah, no problem. And the thing is, if there's issues with uh, with members, they can uh, bring it up uh, to the board, and then we can make an appropriate decision. But I think that we have to look at this, uh, you know, if someone gets on a committee and doesn't participate and doesn't communicate, and that's the level I was talking about, you know, that where whether you sign or not, uh, I, I think we need to do something because you need active committees. We don't have any bylaws or anything that run these committees, so when they're short, uh, a quorum and they have to go several months and they haven't got enough people there because it might be a different mixture mm -hmm. but you have some people that never show up so that it's kind of hard to take care of financial matters or kind of do anything because you don't have a quorum and that's that's the mechanism of taking bring it up to us yeah. and we can uh, yeah. appropriately yeah. Add. so yeah. now now I was wondering is there a cap on members of that board or could they add new members I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's a cap. I don't even know. On, if, if, do any of the committees have a cap on I it? don't believe so. Some, some the way they worded them at town meetings had a cap of people, but I'm not sure this is one. I think you were probably looking at zoning and land use. No, I know those RSA ones. That those ones have the RSA. Yeah. Oh, this is not an RSA. No, but I don't like the, the building committees and stuff have had um, caps of people on it. So. Just the response. I think maybe we should look at that and just see if. Would, would that be a question to ask NHMA? If there's a cap to a, com a certain committee or if there's an RSA, we should be following? Well, I looked at how that was developed because you gave us the meeting minutes and I didn't see that there was a cap of number of people on no. it. To me, the more the merrier. I mean, as far as, I mean, the problem is you, you run out of all people, but you don't get enough. Yeah. Right, but I was just right. saying, you know, they were looking to replace one member that was resigning. Maybe they could, um, you know, get more members if there's no cap to it. More participating members, I guess. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we we just we'll wait till we hear a response back from that uh, volunteer committee, and we'll go from there, and we'll yeah. act appropriately. All right. Next is um, uh, we have a special meeting on uh, 
Thursday the 20th is a workshop meeting regarding uh, the continuation of the, of the uh, personnel plan changes. And this is a draft uh, agenda. This is coming up July 20th. Correct. Yeah. This, this is next uh, next week at next uh, 3 p.m. And I think we already stated that the public will be able to speak, but all that, you know, all like the requested time and not throughout, so we can get through some of these subject matters. Correct. And the meeting, do we have the meeting rooms uh, reserved? Yep. Okay. If this was occupied, we'd go to the library and find a spot in the library. Yeah, no, this is fine. Okay. Good. Yeah, we need a more controlled environment. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> you kept elbowing me during the meeting, you know? No, I'm, I'm only kidding. Okay. Question. Is this a meeting you need me at? Uh, no. Okay. I just want to make sure because I don't know if I'm going to be on vacation. No, it's a time. it's a workshop where we're going to okay. be uh, uh, just drafting some language. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Um, and then uh, I just want to. That's good. That's good. Okay. I get a letter from the moderator. This has been a very busy summer. He's been uh, he's got an election coming up on the uh, the special state election, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. on the 25th. Um, get a little note for email from the uh, from Rene. He wants to be there on the 24th. You can have it. Oh, I can have this one. Uh, to set up. Uh, We basically have to do a repeat of the uh, setup as we did for the primary. Now, I know that you guys mentioned um, hiring Woody back for that portion of the setup. Did you want to do that at this time, or did you guys want to do it again? You it guys, went fairly well, to be honest with you. It did. You know? Now, this is going to be more of them. Yeah. I didn't know if you guys wanted to. Right, you mentioned you weren't going to be there. No, I was only kidding. <laughs> I was only kidding. <laughs> went fairly well. I think you guys can do it again, you were thinking. <laughs> So I just didn't know if you guys wanted to do that. I know he is back to full-time status, um, so I didn't know if you wanted to utilize him for a portion of the day. Um, You'd have to pay him time and a half to do it. Yep, I know we talked okay. about that before. Which is, a, which is really not too bad, but the thing is, um, I would say if it was a little bit bigger election, I'd say we, we could probably... I, it's, I'm, I'm ambivalent on this one. I know I really don't... It's, that's a bottom line way. It that. didn't... Uh, Rainy's going to be back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. they're doing all of the fringe stuff. And we just have to add a few more yeah. of what we had the last four time. Boots. And I had a question, though, because he's, you know, you're looking at 4 o'clock, but there's no school. I don't know if it, we could start earlier, maybe. Maybe start a little earlier and get you know, out of the way. All right, well, let's talk about it and then uh, just keep the idea open. I, do, yeah. I don't want to probably go to the overtime thing right now only because he's supposed to only work eight-hour days, five, eight-hour days. So right. we yeah. don't want to go into overtime. No, so we'd have we to alter his day if, if we, we use the so. complicate his case. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we wait till he's on uh, okay. full-time status but, and can use overtime. But email Rainey and this thing is we can do it earlier. I know he may have a job, but we can, there's no problem with us going in there earlier. And set, yeah. set okay, early. I see that. Sure. <clears throat> okay, we've already addressed this. Uh, there's a note in here. This is a um, with the cemetery trustee about the branches. All the working notes? Yeah. Yeah. All the kind of things you guys made them I, pr I printed it off so that um, I would have a record that I contacted them. Okay. Uh, you want to sign it before you put it in? Jot this down. Okay. This okay. Is, uh, yeah, give it to me after everybody signs it. So and uh, if you recall, part of our personal plan update was looking at the health care plans. And just to give uh, kudos to Lynn, she has reached out to the appropriate person and asked her uh, when she would be available, when she could sit down with the board. We just got to wait as soon as um, we have some uh, dates from her when they would be available. <clears throat> I, I, I believe in the past they've been flexible with our schedule, so okay. I think with that email just explains that when the, the the true numbers will be available, but you can definitely meet with the board to give us uh, different option plans to, right. to look at. It'll so. be definitely next month in August. We, yep, we if you wanna, I think Bob said you want to do the by, by the latter part of August. Yeah, if, if she's available for them, just to get a ballpark, yep. you know, number. That right. we have to work with, you know. They have some idea 
by that time of probably the percentages it may be going up. <coughs> I think it's the one that needs an email to Randy. Okay. So you guys have no problems with the workshop agenda? I'm going to post work. that on the website. Have can be posted. On the um, yeah. it, calendar it, and, and that, outside. That's uh, put a little subject to change. I don't know if that was on there. Subject, subject to change. Uh, always. Okay. I put it. Because right uh, at the last minute, we'll find something at the last minute that we want to talk about. And so we'll yeah. put that on the board and on the website. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, okay. what I usually do. And this way we'll have a, a more of a structured environment rather than saying, hey, what do you think was, what do you think? And the thing yeah. is, that I just think we were... Yeah, I'd like to put the other topics all in the heading there. So yeah. yeah, but I also did it in page uh, order, except for the very bottom, because I think it was more on oh, okay. a, a general discussion, but it involved uh, the, um, the reviews, my, annual yeah. reviews. And the, so if you wanted to do it, the, oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. If you wanted to put in our, if you want to put in our other items in the schedule that we use that day, mm -hmm. in order. As long as so I know, we, as yeah. long as you, I get them in advance. That's why I talked about. Well, he said he had flags. You put down the previous ones we had talked about. Oh, oh the uh, the new one, the, the ones that we're going to review that we have approved. Think about work. We work. We get like a ninety nine percent solution in your box in your inbox before the meeting, so okay. you have time to look at it. Yeah, some we we're, like we're, we're, we're very close yep. to it. Yep. yep. And and along the the line with the personnel plan, we don't have to get it all done that day. Right. And especially if we don't get to the medical part, probably be good to wait till we hear something. Anyways, but. Uh, you know, I don't want to rush through it and then find out that we aired also. And you know, no, we may we, not make much changes, and we do we have some, to uh, do we have to wait to go through the entire thing? I want to bring it up before we implement some of the things we've already agreed upon. Mm. No, it, no, you don't. But it, it makes it very difficult to track yeah. the real changes, and it's to adopt the final. No, document. I don't want some of the changes we've already discussed yeah. to go beyond. Time frames that people might need. Okay. Some of the ones that were previously discussed are going to okay. come up fairly quickly. Yep. Yep. And if we go from July, I know like I'm out of town in October. I'll be yep. out west, and you know I, I want I want to be able to implement some of the changes that okay. we all agreed upon. Yep. So just maybe so the format. Time, for example. I would hope yeah. we'd be done same. by then. But mm -hmm. she, what happens those. with with the changes you make is yep. the every individual that's impacted right. has to receive it in writing. Because I'm yeah. like I'm looking at different things like holidays coming up and then we've got the you know vacation, we've got vacation times yeah. coming up. So we yeah. a lot of that's gonna come fast on us and, yeah. and some of the, some of the changes are gonna actually potentially save money for the town too. Right. That, that's what we gotta look at that. So if we can look at those items at least to make I'll have those written up. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I have the minutes points. from the last meeting. Yeah. I'll put them in a format. I that was just a common sense thing. Okay. Speaking of police, remember I said I was going to help with the chief when the chief was here the other day? Yeah. <laughs> well, we called Lean and said Lean can do the electronic signature. He goes, I don't want to bother Lean again. But she, she has to go online and register as a... Oh. As a so he, here's a chief who's on the phone for about 15 minutes walking me through the registration process. So I'm now the, uh, the point of contact, yeah. interim point of contact. So I use my electronic signature. Okay. And so the thing is, you guys thought it was done. The chief was on, on the phone with me uh, that morning. Mike, I hate to call you, but I was... I did get the email confirmation. So you did whatever you did, went through properly, okay. except I had to go in there. I need in your, to in your file. change the... Well, maybe like if we Password. get the grant, we can update that too. Yeah, I want to update the contact yeah. person. Well, uh, it's it's me because I got the emails. Oh, my, yeah, so so whatever he did, how we did it, it good it worked. job, Mike. <laughs> and I did get the confirmation. And the thing is, of course, you have to make a password. I think it took me like like I, I it seemed like an eternity to make a password. Capital, lowercase, uppercase, one one letters, numbers. I up on those. Oh, yeah. and it had to be twelve characters long or something like that. It was, it was ridiculous. It was more than overkill. Yeah. All the military ones are something like tw uh, 20 of them, 19, 20 to 21. Yeah. Yeah. All they have to be capitals, smalls, yeah. has to be numbers, have to be symbols. It's uh, it's, it's, it's I'd like, but the thing is, I like the security. When it comes to money, we have to have security. Yeah, but you, you know, okay. by the time you get done writing all this stuff down, you break something, but every time you have to write it down because there's no way you can remember. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a logbook at home. There's a lot of different places. One at different password that you never just talking about you. And so I have like two pages of I think different you ones. Else. 
how you want, and then it took I, an eternity to get a password. Yeah. Now I pretty much yeah, know all, of, all the different ones that I got to put in. Yeah. And I said, geez, if I ever have dementia or Alzheimer's, I'm screwed. <laughs> or you lose your book. <laughs> or you lose the book, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's the end of my inbox. I'm going to go to the selectman first, Dave. I don't have anything else. I just have a public comment coming up. I'm good. Okay, but I want to get your comment before we go. Yeah. Public. Bob, anything? Not right now. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to open up to the public. Uh, I'm going to go to the town manager first. Uh, you have covered everything. I'll have those changes for okay. the personnel. All the right. plan that you've discussed earlier and ready for All this right. week. Now, public comment, sir. Yes, sir. What State your name for the record. Mert man, what was the dollar amount of the painting bid that you did not accept? There were two of them we did not accept. Okay, well, what were those amounts? One was twelve thousand and change, and one was seven thousand. Okay, we took the one in the middle. To be honest. Yeah. With you. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. Oh, go ahead. Or I have a question. Do you want me to go before you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I, just something I remembered popped in, in my head when we we're doing finances and everything. I remember there was a discussion about money owed to the town from the state for something to do with um, the flood plan. Flood plan and all that. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's in the budget. It's yeah. in the budget. It's Have called, we received any no. of that money? Oh, past so, years? The past years, we did receive small portions of it, but, you still but it's kind of on hold. 100% no, we have not. Received it. Just curious. But we still have some money in the budget we we're planning right. on. We'll get the, the we'll get we're back up to a hundred percent that's allocated for today, but it's the outstanding that you're thinking yeah. of. Yeah. That we had um is lost this, in is like the state the last said when they plan on giving out that money? Is anybody no, checking I, into this our they, representatives or anything working at I don't it? Know. Do you have any contacts with the state? I know Brian used to reach out to them quite yeah. regularly, but I'm gonna say that a few years ago they took and they put it in the general fund, if mm -hmm. you remember. Yeah. No town got any money. Right. The state kept it all. Yeah. Right. I thought that, on our I thought expense. I then there was enough brouhaha from everyone that's involved in the flood control plane yeah. that they're giving us a percentage of the money and keeping some. And now I think we've just gotten back. I think it's been over time mm -hmm. that it's increased. Yeah. And now it's at 100%. Correct. So well, the monies that you didn't see, you're never going to see. Right. Yeah. They spent it. Well, yeah, we figured that out. Yeah, and, but. and we're in, um, I, earlier this year, I reached out to Hockington, which gets them a, a huge check. Mm -hmm. And uh, they know that we're standing with them, and they will contact, if anything comes up, the town administrator there, they know we'll my number. Contact mm -hmm. us. Yep. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that was a. I just, it popped in when we talked yeah. about finances. Where is, you know, is that, is any of that money ever going to get here so we can use yeah, it? I think Bob is right. It's, it, that's water on the bridge. Mm -hmm. at what so we're, we're, the lease, we're supposed to get 100% of it from now on? It, it's, yeah. Well, right now well, we're getting budgeted, 100%. It's, it's, it depends yeah. what the legislature does next year. <laughs> <laughs> they could take it back. I have property that's affected. My land's affected. It's, the town's supposed to receive. That lost rug because I'm mm -hmm. under. I have an easement line mm -hmm. for which they can hold water back to. Yeah. So the value of that property is lower because of the easement. So the, yeah. the town's supposed to get reimbursed through that flood compact. And, the state's and I'm not the only people. house. I mean, there's several of them in town. Yeah. Right. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. And the chief had a comment for the group. Well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, this morning we got a report of a stolen car from Holiday Shore, I stole the pickup truck from Holiday Shore Drive. And uh, we did a little investigating and we found out this is different than most of the car thefts that we experience in that somebody went down there with a, with a flatbed tow truck and um, ramped it out of there during the day in full view of you know, a couple people who were, who were down there and hauled it away. So um, we're... we're Actually, looking to see if uh, anybody witnessed that thing being being towed, or if anybody's got video cameras, uh, home surveillance systems on their homes. If they check yesterday between say four and five, um, see if they have anything. Uh, it was a um, white ramp truck with a double cab. It's kind of unique. Wow. So uh, we're, we're working on that now. That's blazing. Old. Pretty brazen, yes. Yeah. yeah, that was very brazen. During the day, too. 
Yeah, right during the day. Just okay. old as can be. Hmm. All right. Now, um, that must be on your website too, so they yeah. hopefully we get some Facebook feedback or whatever. We did. We posted that and it, it made the same appeal to the uh, you know, people living in the neighborhood or on Goran Goran Pond, any place that the vehicle was, that the tow truck was likely to pass. If somebody's got cameras that happen to catch the road, we, we may have some something of evidentiary value. So we asked people to just review their cameras and see if they picked anything up. Thank you. Wow. What time was this? Did this happen? Uh, just before 4:30. So you know, it oh, probably got there 4:15 p.m. So we were looking to check maybe between four and five. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Close the public comment. And uh, I don't think I have anything for the non-public session, so I'm going to bypass that. Uh, next meeting will be, um, as I said, in two weeks, but we'll, before the two-week meeting, we're going to have the uh, elections, and we'll have this special workshop meeting. So I'll be seeing you gentlemen again. Very soon. All right. I'm looking for a motion. I'll make a motion that we adjourn at uh, 849. Let me check my... Let me, check, let me check this out. Let's see if you're on it. I'll, 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 I'll do it. Okay. All in favor? I second that. All in favor? Oh, okay. I was, <laughs> you're looking at me. I was going to second it, but geez, now, now it might be opposed. <laughs> but as as I was taught, you can't oppose that. No, no. Mike, no, no. Mike seconded it. Okay. No, I can oppose it, but it's not debatable. Not debatable, right. Is that, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm three oh, zero. Okay, you for all three. Yes. <laughs>